Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And today we are doing Pike Tips and Tricks. This is the number one carry support right now, in my opinion. He is an absolute monster when ahead. And if given the opportunity, he really can take over a game just from the bot lane. So stick around and you're going to learn 14 Pike Tips and Tricks that will help you carry and start you off really well in the new season. Let's get to it. Point number one is really simple. That tapping Q does the same amount of damage as a fully charged Pike Q. You do not need to fully charge your Q if you want to get maximum damage. Therefore, you need to understand that comboing sometimes just involves eing onto somebody and then queuing their face and if you do this properly it's a lot harder to dodge as well point number two is really simple pike r does aoe damage to everything inside the x not just the executed target so if the entire enemy team is super clumped up you can absolutely obliterate their hp bars by just spamming r on top of them and that leads to some insane pentakills point number three is the big one guys it is pike combos so there are a lot of pike combos and they can get quite intricate and if you play pike a lot you can flex on people in game for sure but let's talk practical combos combos you'll actually need in a game and chances are you can actually use them in game rather than the cool combos which you know you'll probably never ever get a chance to use so let's get down to it and just as a note after i show you the basic combos you can add on prowler's claw onto all of these combos and make them even cooler the first one is really basic it is simply just q and e this is your bread and butter q into stun combo pretty much every pike knows this this is what every pike will do in game the second combo is another very simple one which is that you can flash during your q and e and this is integral to the rest of pike combos that you're going to need to learn same thing for your E. Once you use your E, you can then flash during the E cast time so that you can drag your stun with you wherever you flash to. Combo number three is Pike can Q flash and it's a very useful Q flash because it can guarantee a slow which can generally lead to stuff like stuns and then a follow-up kill and keep in mind with point number one it's actually the exact same damage as if you hit them with the fully charged Q anyway. So you know you can stand away from an enemy you can just be laning and then out of nowhere you can just Q flash them to engage if they don't have flash and it's a very deadly combo. Number four is another really common one and and this is one which generally you use to engage on a target if you know that you can get the kill because you're sacrificing your R to actually do this so you're going to get less gold. That's not that big a deal however if you win the team fight. So this is a long range engage combo. You use E into R so you extend the range of your E by Ring at the back of the enemies. So you have to make sure that you are past the enemies. And on top of that you can add on flash to the last combo. So the fifth combo is essentially the same as the last one but with flash to extend it even longer and you know you can stun like an entire team with this if you time this right. And just because we can let's add prowler's claw onto the last combo to literally triple the range of your stun it is actually a very you know situational thing that you can do however it looks absolutely sick so like you know if you ever pull this off in a game please send me a clip i would love to see it it's super cool and finally i thought another useful combo to mention would be the erq combo so essentially you're closing the gap with your er combo and then you're queuing the enemies at the end of it generally this is for like a single target you know they have no flash or dash to get away from your er or you know they're not going to react to your r and then you can you know pull them into your team one shot them and you're happy. You want to have your R to reset uh, in this combo, but it is what it is. And there's one other combo, which I think, you know, most Pike videos go over, and I think it's quite relevant for Pikes, which is the E into stun, into turn around, basically, and walk backwards, and then hook the enemies into your team with Q. It's just generally, you know, a simple combo that if you know you can land the stun with E, you can then Q the enemies back into you. Now that we've learned some pretty cool Pike combos, the rest of the tips are basically going to be focused on you getting as much stuff as you can out of Pike's kit. So let's get to it. Point number four is very simple. You can auto attack after you do a fully charged Q. Even if you're standing right next to the target and you fling them away from you, you guarantee an auto attack. It's just a little bit of damage. Number five is that your E breaks your W's camouflage and ends the move speed you get from your W. So remember only to E when you're in range or you want to engage or you absolutely know that you don't need the move speed. Um, you know, you can also do things like E and then use the W move speed to guarantee that you hit your E because the enemies can't outrun you. So there's a little bit of interaction between E and W that you should probably learn and a couple of cool tricks you can do just to make your life a bit Easier. Point number six is that your Q always drags the enemies a set distance no matter what. So you can drag them over walls, you can drag them over obstacles, you can drag them over Anivia walls, and no matter where you are, as long as you hit them, you will drag them a set distance. So they might land up in front of you, they might land up behind you, it really depends, but just keep that in mind. Point number seven, Pike's passive gray health only restores when he is not visible to any enemies, which means you can scout for wards very easily by checking whether you're regening HP after taking damage in brushes. If you're not regenerating, it's possible you're standing on a ward. Point number eight is another one that I have used in Pike games before, which is R 
cannot be interrupted, which means if you actually use Pike R and you hit an enemy, no matter what happens, you will appear next to that enemy, wherever your R is, which means you can use it actually as an escape. So if you see some CC coming towards you that you know you cannot avoid, you don't have any way of dodging it, and you know it will kill you, you can R onto an enemy that's far away or across the wall, and you have a decent chance of surviving. So, you know, it's a pseudo escape sometimes. Obviously, keep in mind that you kind of want to use your R to kill people because it gives you a lot of gold. Number nine is that there are actually two sound effects that the enemies hear when Pike is Wing and he's close to them. So if Pike is invisible and running around and they're above the execute threshold for Pike's R, they will hear one sound. However, if they are below the execute threshold for another R, they hear a different Pike sound and it's actually a very spooky sound that tells them, hey, you're about to get executed. So you have to be very careful with, you know, like using your W near a target who could potentially flash away from your ult because you can alert them to the fact that they're within execute range and give them some sort of reaction time or preparation to be able to get away from your R. Number 10 is again, very simple. Your Q hitbox lollipops. If you don't know what lollipopping is, you can check out my other videos on Thresh, Blitzcrank, and Nautilus, but all skill shot hooks on support champs have this kind of like lollipopping effect. Uh, they get bigger at the end of their hitbox. That's basically what it is. So yeah, Thresh hook lollipops at the end of his effect. Number 11, you can flash during your R animation. Very useful for things like if there's CC or damage coming your way during your R and you can't avoid it. I mean, use that however you will. Number 12 is actually about Pike's passive. So Pike does not gain HP when you build HP items. Instead, he converts that bonus HP to attack damage. But as the wiki states, each bonus HP you buy is only 93.75% gold value compared to buying AD. So you can buy shield items on Pike, but generally stacking a lot of HP is not that useful. And that's why you buy a lot of AD and lethality on Pike because he scales with those items. Number 13 is your R doesn't execute clones and does not reset if you try to ult a target in zombie state. So stuff like Renata W is very strong against Pike and you need to keep track of these cooldowns in team fights. Point number 14 and this is an important one. The crux of Pike is his R, his ultimate. And it is what separates the good pikes from the bad, how they use the R. I cannot stress this enough. This champion is so much stronger with a good player behind the wheel. What I mean by this is you should be tracking flashes and dashes in the middle of the fight. Also, who has a stopwatch or who has Zhonya's, who has Kale Alt or Heal? Anything that can deny your R, you have to keep track of. And as you play pike, you will have moments where the enemies deny you and deny your ult. And to become a great pike player, you're gonna have to ask yourself, why did you miss the ability or the the item that denied your ult. And once you master that, you will be one of the most overpowered supports in League of Legends. As always, if you're enjoying these videos, it would really help the channel if you left a like and drop a comment below as to what champion you want to see next. Appreciate the support. That is all the tips I have for you on Pike, ladies and gentlemen. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to go check out my Nautilus tips and tricks video for another support that you'll be 1v9ing with. See ya.